It was a very bold decision merging number one and number two companies. Any challenge that we have at Arsramitta, we're able to master it. In the face of all the crisis, we continue to be most admired steel company. As long as we remain focused, I'm very confident that this company will continue to perform 10 years from today. The British-based Indian steel magnate Lakshmi Mittal has secured his merger with Arcelor to create a global steel giant that dwarfs all others. It is the best fit between any two companies in the industry. When the deal was announced, the idea of making a bid for Arcelor, which was the, the jewel of the European steel industry, did take people by surprise. The fit was perfect. The one brought to the table what other was missing in a manner of speaking. So it was perfect. So it was the idea to create really in our industry a global company for the first time. It had never happened before. And I think that was very interesting. It was emerging countries, it was developed countries, it was high-tech steel, it was commodity steels, it was mining, it was steel making, it was distribution, it was engineering. So from that point of view, I would say that gave quite an exciting new view that we could really transform the, the company. It was like a dream come true because you have now created the preeminent steel company on the planet. We were all very excited. We were looking forward to creating this institution. I could see the excitement and motivation in the people all around the company. They could see the values of this merger. And it came at a moment where the economic cycle was really booming. Clearly, we had wind behind the sales because the steel markets were improving. Within the first 12 months of the merger, we were achieving levels of profitability much higher than what we'd anticipated. Today, financial turbulence continued to spread around the world and another day of quite desperate economic news. About two years later, the financial crisis hit, and it was a very tough time for steel. Prices plummeted, capacity had to be taken offline. There was a huge need to restructure the company, to improve its cost competitiveness, and that is really putting a lot of pressure off the people. It was a moment very difficult, very difficult, because it was our métier, our heart, our life. We started effectively battening down the hatches before the storm had really, you know, hit. It's provided them, and in a way us, with a new set of ideas about how a big global company does respond to a, a big economic challenge and stay intact. So as an organization, we did a tremendous job reacting to the 2008 financial crisis. I think at the outset of the crisis, we were very quick to recognize it for what it was. We recognized that this was going to take time to get out of the, the difficulties and took the necessary actions. Most important strategic initiative is that we continue to remain competitive in all the geographies. For example, the European crisis hits in 2012, and we took the very painful decision of shutting primary capacity in Europe. It was uh, very difficult for the employees affected, but it really secured the future of the remaining 100,000 employees we have in Europe. When the crisis came, the steel demand dropped in Europe with 30%. So we very rapidly defined what we wanted to do. But the first step is to say, okay, we had to adapt our footprint. The second step is then to say, okay, now we are going to run all these installations at maximum speed, maximum performance and the third step is then to say okay now we have a choice to produce what we want to produce go more to high value uh, steels increase our market share and now the fourth step we have to achieve excellence in everything to be competitive the challenges in the u.s over the last couple of years have been uh, plentiful we have about 50 percent of our iron ore in captive mines so we really didn't benefit from a cost perspective with a drop what we did see is a drop in our steel prices. So what we had to do was find any way we could to lower cost so that we could retain our margins. Our employees have been unbelievably resilient. We've decreased spending, yet we've improved all our operating parameters. And no matter what has happened in uh, the demand from an overall level, we've been able to maintain our share. Nesses 10 anos, nas unidades do Brasil e da Argentina, enfrentamos os desafios com criatividade e empenho gerando resultados consistentes para o grupo. We've done extremely well in improving the operations there and we now have a cost position which allows us to export slab 
from Brazil. On the long side, we have a very strong franchise business that uh, creates value all the way through the chain, and that's uh, functioning very well. A busca por soluções inovadoras e a oferta de produtos de alto valor agregado tem sido a marca do Brasil nesses 10 anos. The mining segment has had to adapt in many different ways to ensure its competitiveness through this price decreasing period. Iron ore prices peaked at $200 a tonne in early 2011, and in 2015 Q4 they fell as low as $37. The main areas have been around how can we actually get our cost down but also be more sustainably competitive. The actions by the mining segment to achieve a new level of competitiveness have been aided by understanding a common objective across the assets and a lot of hard work by all the people in the mine division. The financial crisis definitely showed how important sustainability is and we could take all these steps necessary before the crisis and after the crisis to strengthen the sustainability of our business and our company. We were able to weather this crisis as a global company that I'm not sure we could have done as individual companies. We can only say we came out of the crisis much stronger than we were before. We have also seen some geopolitical and social crises, for example, Ukraine war, and we have also seen Ebola in Liberia. I think ArcelorMittal took enormous leadership to really uh, energise governments, to energise Washington, to cause focus to help places like Liberia and surrounding countries. We didn't have one person on site uh, contract um, Ebola, and we're talking a work workforce of plus 2,000 people. In the last 10 years, the kind of exchanges happened between different uh, units of the group have helped us a lot with the last event, which was Medan Revolution. The challenges were enormous. In the difficult conditions, in my opinion, people are the best qualities and able to withstand any challenges, any challenges. Because of them, this plant is standing where it is today. The higher value steels are always important, and uh, the more you are in a crisis, the more important they become. So we are investing a lot in the research and development, but that is absolutely needed for what we think will be needed for the customers in the future. We have the best R&D team in the world. We continue to invest with that team. The greatest challenges that have come up over the past 10 years is really developing these advanced high-strength steels to make the most efficient and safest automobiles ever known to man. We have an offer that customers want now and in the future. In automotive, we've got a very high ranking with most of our customers in the ways in which they evaluate us. Technology, though, they rank us number one. We continue to expand our business for the strategic products like Steel for Autos. Vama is a joint venture between us and the Valen Steel Group. We didn't have a production facility in China at the time. So the way we're transferring our technology and making it available to customers is through a downstream asset. I'd say the biggest success we've had in the United States over the last few years is the acquisition of Calvert. Calvert it is having already a position in the market which is strong, on which we add additional investments and capabilities that will make that plant unbeatable in the market. When ArcelorMittal came, everything started changing in a positive way. We started bringing in researchers, engineers, people who really knew the steel industry to help this facility achieve its potential. Today we're focused on third generation steels and, and how to make sure that steel is a material of choice for the automotive industry. In the next 10 years, we will make sure that we will remain competitive in the world of tomorrow. I think the most important challenge for the future, I could call it keeping up with the speed of the world. The next 10 years is about sustainability. We need to remain the material of choice for the automotive industry. Uh, we need to have the cost position so that we're more than just competitive against uh, Asian steel companies. And underpinning all of that is we need to remain the safest steel company on the planet. We have launched our uh, Action 2020, which is the beginning of our strategy for the next 10 years, which will continue to make us the industry leader, continue to make everyone feel proud of Arsro Mittal.
A lot of the things that we did was copied by the competition. And you fast forward another three years and you realize that we need to do something that the competition cannot replicate. And the last few years has been about finding strategies which are unique to our company. We have a clear strategy uh, for the next five years, and uh, we are totally convinced that implementing that strategy, we will be uh, uh, very successful. We understand we have to move faster than the competition, have to do better than the competition. And that's what we focus on. We have to make our business ready for these new challenges. So you just know that you have to do it and that you want to be the first and the best one to do it. We've actually got to say we're an industry of the future. We're really exciting and we're doing great stuff. I think the next 10 years, we will see a huge number of technological innovations. The researchers always find new ways of making new steels and, and that makes it so unique. ArcelorMittal is keen enough finding something new, keen enough of getting innovations. And that showed me steel is not a material of the tradition which will be replaced. Steel is for us a material in the future. Clearly we have demonstrated that we have quality, we have leadership and we have sustainability as a company. Culture of creativity and culture of almost maniacal commitment to winning. And as long as we remain focused on those attributes, I'm very confident that this company will continue to perform 10 years from today. What is most visible is a sense of pride that uh, the average employee has in relation to the company. When the people are entering in the steelmaking industry, it's like they are entering a religion. You know, they stay till the end of the career. En 2011, euh, bon, ça faisait 32 ans que je travaillais à la série. Hein, donc je suis né à la série. La série, c'est ma vie. You have people who've been here for years and who know this plant from the inside out. And it's so amazing to be part of that. Wherever I go, I see very, very high levels of energy. And they're very, very passionate, very experienced, very skillful as well. What makes me very proud is the, the knowledge that I've gained, the experience that I've gained. Uh, you cannot measure it. The depth of knowledge, the upstanding dedication to certain things like the environment is really in a class by itself. Most of my career, safety was always emphasized, but kind of with a wink and a nod. In ArcelorMittal, safety is number one and people recognize that. The number of accidents have been reduced by three quarters over these 10 years. They're very passionate. They're very excited, very motivated. I am always very proud of my people. If you look back over these 10 years, I think that you keep the successes and the good souvenirs in front. Hello and all the difficult events have made you stronger. We are product leaders, we are technology leaders, we're recognized by the marketplace, and that is tremendous. The strides we have made over the last 10 years have been very, very significant. And that puts us in an excellent position for the next 10 years. The merger changed everything. We really do have a distinctive culture. When I look at our competitors, they don't have that combination of business acumen and technical capability. We have incredible ability to re-emerge victorious. We have incredible ability to reinvent ourselves, reaching it of a level that nobody in the world can touch. For me, fabric of life is actually a source of pride. Almost everything that you touch has a mark that we left on it. The fabric of life is a very accurate way of describing how steel impacts on our lives. And in a world where we need to think about recyclability, we need a material which is so versatile, you can use it in a zip fastener to make in the world's tallest building. Steel is such a unique material. You cannot compare that with something else. It has still such an unexploited potential of, of new properties. Certainly we will continue to speak about steelmaking being central to growth and development of economies that still need to industrialize. When people build new airports, as in when people build new dams, new power plants, we will be there to supply them with steel.
we have the biggest and the most innovative knowledge about the steel industry in the world. We are all extremely proud of the tremendous effort all our employees have put in making this company successful. I'm very privileged to be the CEO of ArsoMittal for the last 10 years. And I'd like to thank each and every employee of ArsoMittal who helped me to continue to make ArsoMittal and disputed leader in the steel industry.